Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the NAVE News Update. It's Friday, January 31st, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. At Super Bowl time, a spot from Native Americans calls on the NFL to make a change. The National Congress of the American Indians is taking the occasion of the NFL's crown jewel to raise awareness and gain support for its campaign to change the name of the Washington Redskins. The organization says it's an attempt to correct the popular misconception that Redskins is an acceptable and original Indian name instead of a long-standing derogatory term. It's an ongoing debate with Redskins owner Daniel Snyder saying that he has no plans to change the name while in December of 2013, the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, a coalition of over 200 national organizations, passed a resolution on the NFL team to do just that. The PSA is called Proud to Be, a two-minute commercial that highlights the influential Native Americans throughout history. Proud. Forgotten. Indian. Navajo. Blackfoot. Inuit and Sioux. Survivor. Spiritualist. Patriot. Sitting Bull. Hiawatha. And Jim Thorpe. Mother. Father. Son. Daughter. Chief. Apache. Pueblo. Choctaw. Chippewa. And Crow. Underserved. Struggling. Resilient. Squanto. Red Cloud. Tecumseh. And Crazy Horse. Rancher. Teacher. Doctor. Soldier. Seminole. Seneca. Mohawk. And Creek. Mills. Will Rogers. Geronimo. Unyielding. Strong. Indomitable. Native Americans call themselves many things. The one thing they don't. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has opened shelters for people without adequate heat due to propane shortage exasperated by recent cold weather. About 10,000 people live on the reservation that straddles the North Dakota and South Dakota border. The tribe has opened shelters in Fort Yates on the North Dakota side and in Wakpala on the South Dakota side. The American Red Cross is providing meals at both locations along with cots and blankets. Tribal Chairman Dave Archibaugh the second says it's potential life or death situation. He says about 90% of the 5,500 homes on the reservation are heated by propane. Tribal Emergency Management Director Elliot Ward says only a handful of people have used the shelter so far, but both he and the chairman expect the number to increase. After months of campaigning by Survival International, Brazil's government is finally acting to evict illegal invaders from the Awa tribe's land. The Brazilian government's operation to remove all invaders from land of the Awa tribe is now in its fourth week. The large-scale operation involves several ministries, Brazil's Indigenous Affairs Department, the Army, Federal Police, and the President's Office, with a ground squad of at least 200 agents. It follows survival's global campaign to save Earth's most threatened tribe from extinction. At least 369 eviction orders have now been served, notifying 90% of the territory's illegal occupants that they must leave. Settler families have 40 days to leave from the day they receive the notice and will be giving alternative land and access to a range of benefits. Oversights are currently underway to identify ranches and settlements which have not yet been registered. 
Over 30% of the Awa indigenous territory has been deforested. The Awa are one of the last remaining nomadic hunter-gatherer tribes in the Amazon. Soon a four-lane freeway will slice across the wetlands next to Haskell University in northeast Kansas. Over 100 years ago, this land sheltered native children fleeing a government school. It still cradles remains today. Advocates managed to stall the South Lawrence traffic way for 25 years, but construction began in 2012. Officials call the traffic way an economic corridor as it will connect two existing highways. But a tiny forlorn graveyard at the edge of the wetlands contains 116 headstones, each marked with a name, a tribe, and an age. In many cases, younger than 15. Oral histories also say that many children who died at the school or while running away are buried in unmarked swamp graves. Haskell staff and students have led the movement to save the wetlands, though the school has avoided official involvement. The community also uses the land for spiritual practice. The wetlands holds sweat lodges and a medicine wheel. The freeway won't touch the medicine wheel, cemetery, or sweat lodges, but the sound lights and 15-foot concrete barrier will certainly have an impact. The road will cover ruins from Haskell Institution, erasing testament to the long history of Native suffering. By a vote of 70 to 0, the New Mexico House of Representatives approved a measure which would seek the designation of the National Native American Heritage Day as a federal public holiday. House Memorial 4, sponsored by Representative Roberto Gonzalez, encourages the state's congressional delegation to advocate for the legal public holiday in honor of the Native American people. This memorial recognizes Native Americans' historic and contemporary experiences and their substantial contributions to the United States' cultural, artistic, economic, social, religious, and political landscapes. The federal government established the fourth Friday in November every year as Native American Heritage Day. HM4 states that declaring this day as a legal public holiday will provide more opportunity to educate Americans and correct misunderstandings about indigenous cultures and to celebrate Native Americans' contributions to the United States. Off the Res, a 2011 documentary by director Jonathan Hawk, has been released on iTunes. Off the Res follows the story of the Schemmel family who left the Umatilla Reservation in Oregon in pursuit of their athletic dreams. At the center of the three-year-old film is Shoni Schemmel, whose basketball skills gained the notice of several major universities. Another component of the 89-minute film is Shoni's mother, who also left the reservation to coach a high school basketball team in Portland. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.